Hello friends. You know weight is a good indicator of health. Naturally, parents worry if their child looks thin or they feel is not growing well. Families also worry when an adult starts losing weight. Today in this episode of Steer Channel, we are going to discuss poor weight. Is it normal or abnormal? I am Dr. Anjali Gokan, a practicing pediatrician from a suburb of Mumbai. Let us consider weight in children first, as they are constantly growing. You know that weight is a variable that depends on genetics, gestation and weight at birth, nutrition, and any illness either overt or covert. When parents bring their child to the clinic with issues regarding growth, we would want to know. How is his activity, his appetite, birth weight, what was gestation at birth, how is his general health, and are there any other associated symptoms? We will measure his height, weight, head circumference, and plot it on a growth chart. It's also good to know at the same time the parent's height and build, as this will reflect on the child's growth. It's very helpful if the child's previous records of height and weight are available. because a single weight in isolation should not be considered it's the continuum of growth that is important the growth chart therefore is the most powerful tool in growth assessment and every pediatrician must consider it his responsibility to plot it the growth chart gives us an overview of the child's health over a period of time If the weight has been following the same percentile or varies between two percentiles on the growth chart, the growth is normal. Then ask about the child's activity. Our teacher, Dr. Amdekar, says if the mother gets tired by the end of the day but not the child, this child is normal. When asked about appetite, the mother may say the child doesn't eat enough. but often this is appropriate for the child's size weight loss in any child is significant however beyond infancy a constant weight over several months can be normal this is because growth occurs in spurts in children the most important indicator of normalcy will be the child's energy and vitality Now let us consider some special situations like a premature baby. They will have a different growth pattern. Their growth will trail behind those born at term and will catch up by two years. The smaller the baby in gestation, the longer it will take to catch up. Whereas near term babies may catch up by six months to a year. Similarly, an IUGR child will have catch up growth till two years if nutrition is good. However, if such a child falters and does not achieve the growth expected by four years, then a reference to an endocrinologist may be in order. Some babies will have just the opposite; they have catch down growth. That is, they will grow well till six months and then fall off their percentile. They may even cross two percentile lines, and their growth velocity may slow down. Like I said, this is just the opposite of catch-up growth, and by two years, this child will achieve his original genetic potential, and then they will continue along that trajectory. This is thought that there were situations that led to accelerated intrauterine growth, which led to a high birth weight, and now this starts correcting from six to twenty-four months. the parents of such children will typically feel that this child is now not growing well but we need to reassure them that all is well so so far we saw how genetics birth weight and gestation will determine weight we also saw how a growth chart absence of illness and the child's energy and vitality will help us conclude that he is normal Now let us see how nutrition plays an important part in determining weight. Consider a newborn who is not gaining weight well. 
we ask the feeding history the mother is not breastfeeding and you ask her how she makes the formula she is making very dilute formula such a child will pass lots of urine will be hungry rather all the time and will be very irritable this will mislead us into thinking about renal tubular acidosis however giving the correct dilution and also encouraging breastfeeding will put things right similarly some children are fed very watery gruel or very dilute cow's milk after 6 months such a child will also falter in growth and will always be hungry teenagers may start losing weight due to images with issues of body image and food fadism we have to be aware of this so so far we have seen how nutrition affects weight now let us see how illnesses overt or covert affects weight some children are brought to the physician for severe symptoms of illnesses rather than concerns of weight and they may be having major illnesses like tuberculosis malabsorption congenital heart disease or severe respiratory infections grd cerebral palsy renal failure connective tissue disease or malignancies even all these cause severe growth faltering and we have to address the main issue along with good nutritional counseling now there is one more group of patients where these children have subtle symptoms which have to be teased out in the history for example children with iron deficiency anemia they will have poor appetite poor weight gain and correction with a good diet and iron supplements will put things right some infants will have renal tubular acidosis with poor weight they will have tachypnea additionally and polyuria at times a newborn who is not gaining weight may have undiagnosed hypothyroidism check the tsh levels and they can have poor weight such children surprisingly look chubby but the height and weight are both affected a child with celiac disease can have diarrhea and constipation off and on will have anemia and poor weight gain a child with cystic fibrosis may have recurrent respiratory infections or large bulky stools with poor weight gain a child with loss of weight normocytic normochromic anemia may have renal failure due to an undiagnosed renal disorder an adolescent boy losing weight with a good appetite and polyuria and tiredness may have type 1 diabetes an adolescent girl who has poor appetite is losing weight prefers to be alone and withdrawn may have clinical depression now that we have done with children let us consider adults with weight loss some adults start good eating habits regular physical exercise they will lose weight but yet feel energetic and happy this is normal however some adults who are losing weight abnormally will feel tired listless and they could be having infections like tuberculosis or hiv they could be having malignancy chronic renal failure and no renal symptoms they could be having diabetes and ketoacidosis or even hyperthyroidism so adults who feel unwell are losing weight they need to be worked up for an underlying cause so in conclusion we have considered various conditions in children and adults for poor weight we said children need growth surveillance and height and weight must be measured at every visit and plotted on a graph by their child's clinician throughout the period of childhood this is the best monitor of health active energetic and happy children who show steady growth are normal even if they are smaller than their peers tired listless children and adults losing weight need to be worked up to find the underlying cause this is all in this episode keep watching the steer channel for more such videos